Welcome back to the Justice Factor as we continue our conversation with EFF leader Julius Malema. Julius Malema, let's talk some about uh, the controversies that have dogged your movement over the past few uh, weeks uh, sure. uh, as campaigning began in, 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 in its earnestness. Um, are you calling for an Arab Spring in South Africa when you say um, we want to see more protests in South Africa? Our people must begin to speak for themselves. Leadership has abandoned them, and therefore they are the, their own liberators. Uh, they have been to every uh, channel uh, available to them, and uh, there hasn't been any result. So in a, in a situation where 20 years into democracy, they still find themselves in such conditions, they have to do something. And uh, we shouldn't be threatened by protest justice. It's protected by the Constitution. It is their democratic right. They must do it. They must do it in a dignified manner. They shouldn't uh, ban uh, buildings. They shouldn't intimidate people. But no one should stop them from protesting. Well, your, yeah, there's a picture doing the rounds on Twitter and in newspapers where your uh, party is seen delivering uh, tires uh, to people in Hebron in Pretoria. That's, that's direct provocation and fueling, the, fueling these protests. Sometimes pictures lie, my brother. Don't just see a picture and conclude. The police actually opened a case against the person who was driving the buggy. But the leader and then, of, and then of the later, EFF in, in Hebron, Mr. Muhulazi, said, yes, it's our truck. He was one of the people on the truck. And he says, we took the, the tires from one section of the township and delivered to people me, on the other side of the township. Let me give you the facts. I mean, we're here to share information mm, let's share. with our people. The guy was charged by police, mm -hmm. accused of carrying tires and distributing them in the township, only to realize that actually they were removing tires. Account as now. they were entering the township. And I, I'm telling you now, the charges have been dropped. They were, they were, they, you want me to believe that, oh, you know, on the day of the protest, an EFF car arrives and says, oh, we're going to clean up this place, when you're calling for people to protest. Then it, you don't believe police. Then you don't believe the law enforcement. The law enforcement have dropped charges against him because it, evidence was very clear that the man was not uh, inciting violence. I'm not talking here, say but here. He, no, but I'm I, talking I, about people uh, who operate uh, under oath. I'm, I'm talking about yeah. the same EFF And the person leader. you are quoting yes. doesn't operate under oath. I'm telling you but about But he's a member of the EFF. When no. he says, I'm one of the people in this picture, and I took the tires where they were burning and no cars were being allowed through to take them to the other, another section of him. My brother, the owner of the car is Stan. He's in the region of EFF. Mm. He was charged with inciting violence. And when he presented the evidence before a uh, prosecuting authority, they dropped charges because there was no but such evidence. The charges are not all, all dropped. All the, that it might be that there's no evidence, but from his own mouth. So why do you want to accuse said, people just as if there's no evidence? Uh, Let's well, leave that uh, one. There's uh, no evidence. Uh, no, no, the law there, enforcement no will not there's find evidence. a clear evidence. confession to, uh, to the city press newspaper in which he said, I carried, and there's a picture, and that's him saying, I carried this stuff. From I one know part the, of the guy who was driving the buggy. His name is Stan. Charged and charges yeah. dropped because... There's no evidence. If there's no evidence, Justice, you move to the next question. Let's move to the Let's next question. Let's not stick to there, rumors. There is a, there is a poster shown uh, of your members holding a big red poster with, uh, with the words, the honeymoon is over for whites in South Africa. Do you, do you agree with this sort of sentiment? We distanced ourselves immediately after Marikana. It's an old uh, poster, banner. Maybe it reached a justice factor very late. No, no, it which didn't. Which means your researchers are very you, you, have, you haven't been so, on the so, show so, for a long so, time. So you haven't it, been on the show for a long time. We've distanced ourselves from that. This is a home of white people. And re look at how uh, many are beginning to join the EFF and mm -hmm. feeling so comfortable with the EFF because they appreciate that we need to resolve the past. So let's not go to an October story. There should be something new. <laughs> let's deal with that. In B, in the, on the BBC uh, in 2012, you told Kamala Dumour that we are going, you were in London at the time, you said we are going back to the ANC in December when Jacob Zuma is kicked out of the ANC. He wasn't kicked out. He was retained by a 74% majority. And so um, you stayed out of the ANC. Is it possible for the EFF and for yourself to go into alliance with the ANC after the election? 
Let's deal with that when we uh, arrive at that point. I don't think that uh, the EFF uh, is ready to go into any alliance with anybody. We are preparing to take over government. Unlike Holomisa, we are not contesting to be an opposition. We call ourselves a government in waiting. So we don't think about such things. We are now preparing which one can be a DG, which one uh, can hand intelligence, such stuff. So not mm -hmm. alliances because mm -hmm. our people have shown confidence in the EFF and we think that we'll take over Would this Would you government. be prepared to sit down with ANC leaders if President Zuma was not part of that team? The ANC has sold out as completely as a body and not only President Zuma uh, and therefore we have introduced an alternative and this alternative is an alternative to the ANC which has failed poor masses of our people. So we are not prepared to go back to the ANC, especially myself as an individual. I've ceased to be Julius Malema. I'm an EFF. I'm a working EFF. In everything else I do, I represent EFF. Just on that point, I mean, five years ago, you were saying you're prepared to kill for President Zuma. So what went wrong? At which point did this enmity and this, when, what, which point did you move well, apart? Well, look, uh, the marriage didn't work and uh, we went separate ways. Uh, and uh, even when we're still in the ANC, fortunately, some of the things that we're raising ourselves, we raised them when we were in the ANC and said, we are moving away from our people and we seem to be obsessed with the uh, uh, benefits of political elite. And uh, we have replaced the weight people with investors. And, and we think that we must go back to the basics and address the concerns of our people. And uh, the ANC became uncomfortable with us and they were shown the door. Uh, as disciplined members of the NC at the time, we apologized, we begged, and you reach a point where you say, look, I've tried everything, now I move on with my life. I've done that, I'm not looking back. Once beaten, twice shy. Helen Zeller says that she believes that the ANC is going to get 60% of the vote in this election. How do you think your party will perform in this election? I don't listen to Helen Zeller. Who's Helen Zeller to tell me what is going to happen in the election? Uh -huh. She has got no capacity. Tell, tell me what your capacity uh, is. My capacity is government in waiting. I will acquire the necessary percentage for me to be government. Absolutely and more than that. So any percentage, remember, that it's not only 51% which gives you uh, the power to be government. Mm -hmm. You can get less than that and no one get an absolute majority. Go we go into a coalition the, and the, the EFF DA becomes perhaps. government. No, there are many uh, parties in South Africa. I mean, uh, uh, we'll deal with those issues after the elections. For now, let's consolidate our base and we need to know what type of mandate are we getting from our people. So are Helen Zile is a complete failure. I mean, if you, why is she contesting elections? Why are people following a person who says, I've lost even before I arrived there? The ANC will get 60%. Perhaps she's being, I mean, uh, 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 let's take the Ipsos Machino poll. It doesn't give you a win. It gives the ANC 53% majority. So, you know, I mean, we could sit here and say, yeah, the EFF is going to win. But the numbers don't show that. No, those researchers don't even know a place called Zingi Zingi. They don't know Relela. They don't know Seoul City. They research from these uh, urban people who are accessible. I'm telling you of a rural mass which is ready to change uh, its vote. So research can be done here in the suburbs and misled. How can you expect people of Houghton who are comfortable to say we want change uh, when they've benefited I, 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 I from I wouldn't the agree that, that all these researchers are sitting there polling people in, uh, in Sunton or Hyde Park only. But let's move on. You're launching your manifesto this weekend. What is it going to say to the people of South Africa? That's a victorious manifesto. It's a product of consultation with uh, taxi drivers, um, uh, petrol attendants, waiters and waitresses, farm mm -hmm. workers, You've got one minute. Workers, what is it going to and, say? And uh, it will express the interest of those people. We are not launching manifesto here in your show, and therefore we can't tell you the contents of the manifesto. Are you going we to call for nationalization of the mines? That's non-negotiable. We are nationalizing the mines, and the profits made out of the mines are going to be shared with the communities where mining is happening, are going to be shared with the workers through workers' trust, and then the remaining will go into the state coffers to finance the social program of the state. We social are grants? Are you going to give out more of those? Which one? Social grants. 
we need we need more uh, social grants as an immediate intervention that but the social grants must be linked with a program of creating jobs particularly for those mothers who are receiving a uh, social grant so it must not be social grants permanently as a temporary intervention linked with a program of job creation Julius Malema, thanks so much for your time and thank good you, luck on the election train. Thank you. Thank you. After the break, we give you our winner and loser of the week. News that moves. ENCA.com.